Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends to this lecture on Pandit Ramabai and um, uh, through um, Ramabai we will try to understand um, the question of caste and gender um, in uh, modern Indian political thought and Ramabai is someone who is uh, really very fascinating in terms of understanding this question of gender and caste which for long have been the male turf only. So, uh, we have discussion and public uh, debate over the question of um, women's education, abolition of uh, sati or say um, uh, uh, vidori marriage or abolition of child marriage and so many other social reforms that is about um, uh, uh, women and women's reforms movement but for a very long time it was male dominated and upper caste uh, led social reforms movement. Pandit Ramabai comes as a uh, um, surprise uh, as a um, new development in the uh, in such women's uh, reforms movement or social reforms movement in the initial decades of our um, um, Indian renaissance and uh, she has actually transcended the uh, women reforms uh, movement which was aiming merely for educating the women or preserving the, um, um, uh, the prevailing uh, women's role or maintaining such uh, roles and just to uh, do that in a better way they were uh, trying to promote modern education and a lot uh, uh, such things. Ramabai was trying to um, uh, theorize or articulate women's role much beyond this kind of um, uh, approach or conservative approach towards the reforms movement or women education to maintain the household or the uh, gender demarcated uh, uh, role um, within the uh, Hindu household or the caste Hindu household. So, in such kind of debate, uh, debate uh, Ramabai's intervention was radical and revolutionary in so many ways and her own personal life from a Brahmin Sanskrit um, conservative family to her religious conversion and then his uh, her support for um, um, women's uh, empowerment and women's em uh, emancipation. Uh, had uh, generated a polarized debate about the acceptance or the role of uh, Ramabai. So, internationally when uh, with her work, um, um, she uh, was admired and supported in England, in US, Japan or in Australia. Back home, she was uh, also uh, uh, divided was also opinion where on the one hand many people admired and acknowledged her role, but in larger mainstream public political debate or about social history, her works remain largely uh, unexplored or largely suppressed for a century. And this is the uh, 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 intriguing uh, or uh, surprising um, uh, thing when we talk about modern Indian political thought or modern Indian political thinking largely the contributions made by thinkers like uh, Pandit Ramabai is uh, remain somewhat marginalized sub suppressed in the mainstream political, but it is no longer see and from many for many uh, contemporary feminist scholars or uh, uh, in many uh, uh, progressive discourse the works and contribution are uh, of Ramabai 
is retrieved and she is also projected as a first Indian feminist uh, uh, thinker who fought ag against the patriarchy of Hindu or orthodoxy. So, around uh, Ramabai and her legacy also there is a kind of uh, uh, controversy surrounding uh, around her conversion to Christianity on the one hand and also to see her as the first uh, uh, feminist thinker um, in India. But uh, Ramabai has again the overall uh, 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 role or articulation about various aspects of individual and collective life including certainly her focus was on the issue of caste and gender and how uh, also the role of religion in uh, uh, constructing a, uh, a good society or a good community. So, there is also a kind of uh, uh, um, controversy for a very long time about the role and contribution of Pandit Ramabai and that we will uh, see more when we proceed with this uh, uh, lecture. Now, her personal life certainly was a embodiment of a lot of confrontations or lot of binaries that was prevailing in her time. So, her period was from 1858 to 1921 and this period was in many ways uh, a phase of transition from one mode of thinking, one mode of governing to a different mode of uh, thinking and governing and in response to that there were also various kind of response including from Hindu orthodoxy or those uh, championing the cause of Sanskrit and uh, Hinduism as the basis of Hindu, uh, uh, Hindu regeneration and so on to those who were arguing about more liberal and secular kind of um, uh, India. So, uh, there was a kind of uh, uh, transition from uh, uh, one mode of thinking or response to other modes of thinking and response and in such uh, uh, phase Ramabai's her life, her personal life and her contribution is really, really remarkable or uh, unique. So, her biographer uh, Meera Kusambi writes about uh, her life that Pandit Ramabai's life was the site for a series of overlapping encounters, primarily that between Hinduism and Christianity. So, the religious confrontation between these two uh, religious groups, Christianity promoting or expanding Christianity and considering as the superior or true religion and response. So, this historical period as we have seen in many other thinkers like uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy and many others was also a kind of re-articulation of the true meaning of Hinduism or true meaning of Islam or true meaning of Christianity and the uh, competitive and uh, uh, competitive claims about the true meaning of religion. So, uh, her life had uh, this a series of overlapping encounters primarily between the Hinduism and Christianity, rationalism and dogma. So, many ritualistic practices like idol worship or um, 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 sati or um, such uh, superstitious practices which were being criticized by many Hindu reformers and yet they embodied or they tried to revive the true meaning or uh, true interpretation of Hinduism. So, through rationally, through use of science or uh, uh, logic. So, rationalism and dogmas was another such encounters. Individuality and church hierarchy. So, within a religion, the hierarchy that exists between the priest and the followers, the uh, pundits and the um, uh, large uh, Hindu followers. So, this encounter she also faced between the individuality of a believer or a subject and then the hierarchy that is uh, prevailing in that particular religion. These encounters between Hinduism and Christianity or rationalism and dogmas, individuality and religious hierarchy or the hierarchy of the church is surrounded by the larger confrontation between Indianness and the western culture. So, among many social religious reformer of that time the embodiment of Hinduness or Indianness is also something which is seen or projected as a kind of response to the domination of the West and therefore, the opposition to the Western culture or Western uh, 
dress and a lot of things. So, you will find many uh, scholars or reformers were trying to embody uh, what they conceived as the Indianness or uh, in opposition to the uh, western culture or domination of the west. So, besides such encounters, he was also um, uh, 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 confronting or, um, uh, or facing the controversy or confrontation regarding the Indianness and the western culture, feminism and patriarchy in its multiple guys. So, there are different sites of such patriarchy or the encounters between Hind Indianness or the western culture, feminism or patriarchy, uh, rationalism or dogmas, Hinduism or Christianity. So, such encounters were taking place at different sites in multiple uh, uh, disguise. So, Rama by uh, personal life or her social contribution is a uh, is in a way embodiment of such encounters and that is the uniqueness of uh, Ramabai and through her life one can unravel such encounters, such, such fuzziness or such confrontation between different traditions, different uh, uh, kinds of issues or concerns that our reformers or the activists were grappling with in this historical period of transition from one mode of thinking to another mode of uh, uh, thinking. So, in both her personal and public life and also through her writings, Ramabai led a very influential and remarkable life. She was deeply engaged with the questions of gender and caste which we will discuss in more specifically in the next lecture. In this lecture, we are going to focus more on her personal life, her social reforms, her views on religion and how she was seen or her contribution was seen by many of her contemporaries. So, in the next class, we will focus more on um, uh, uh, her views on gender and caste and caste hierarchy in modern India. However, her works and thought as I was saying are relatively less explored when it comes to theorize or to write about the modern Indian uh, thinkers. She devoted her entire life for the empowerment of women. So, that remains her lifelong mission or objective to empower, to emancipate the women from uh, the suppression of all kind. And there, the suppression and oppression of women uh, and through her life, which, uh, which is about a lot of journey from one place to the other place. And she has seen the condition of women from the upper caste to the excluded to uh, child, to the, uh, 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 the adult, to the uh, 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 aged women, their uh, conditions deeply influenced and moved her emotional and intellectual uh, commitment to the social cause and this empowerment or self-reliance of women and not just access to education or of course, that was the basis for such self-reliance, but Ramabai was arguing much beyond the um, uh, then held uh, aims or objectives for the women as promoted by the uh, male counter uh, parts in their social uh, reforms. So, Ramabai uh, has a kind of revolutionary or radical approach to women reforms and this remains her lifelong mission or project. Although primarily concerned with the plight of upper caste Hindu women in initial stages of her reform. So, in uh, the initial decades or initial stages of her engagement with the condition of women, she exclusively talked about the upper caste Hindu, uh, Hindu uh, women. Ramabai, however, equally emphasized upon the multiple sites of exploitations and oppressions of women such as patriarchy, religion, caste, nationalism and even internationalism and the biases that was inherently prevailing in these multiple sites of such exploitations and operations. So, Ramabai has a wide ranging uh, interest and involvement in the um, uh, reform, uh, reform movement um, of society, of religion, of caste or uh, thinking about nation or international developments as well. So, uh, Ramabai is not only praised for her reforms movement and shelters home for the subjugated women. She is also admired for her unique life history. Her personal life was a glaring example of women's liberation and emancipation or in some way the assertion 
of women agency is uh, very reflective in her personal life. So, she was uh, born into a orthodox Brahmin family, married someone who is from other caste. He was a caste which uh, Ramabai referred to as uh, Sudra from uh, Bengal. She travelled different parts of the uh, country and also um, went to England or America which is uh, not uh, very conducive even for the Hindu male or even prohibited by the Shastras and the uh, orthodoxy to uh, cross the sea. And uh, she converted to uh, Christianity, but also criticized many elements and practices of uh, church and uh, uh, enter into a field which was male dominated upper caste uh, uh, led reforms movement. So, her personal uh, life, her own personal life was a glaring example of the assertion of women agency and also uh, the example of women uh, liberation and emancipation and that led to a lot of interest into her life or in, uh, uh, in her works in uh, the world. But at home, for some reason her work was uh, suppressed for a very long time primarily because of the dominance of Hindu orthodoxy. Her own life was a defiance of patriarchy as I have said through her marriage, through her conversion and by taking decisions which uh, was revolutionary and radical in so many ways uh, considering the grippling effect of uh, um, uh, orthodoxy. So, her own life was a defiance of patriarchy and orthodoxy of uh, caste Hindu and that uh, she set uh, as a kind of example for women emancipation and liberation. So, through her own life and various attempts of rehabilitating the destitute women and making them self-reliant, Ramabai carved out a space for herself in the mainstream reform discourse, which had till then as I was saying largely remained an upper caste or middle class and male project. So, uh, through her life, through her works for the uh, destitute or subjugated women or by teaching them uh, uh, self-reliance, Ramabai carved out a space uh, which was largely by then dominated by the upper caste or middle class male, uh, uh, male Hindus. Now, uh, if you look at uh, her early life and education, that was also a kind of uh, uh, radical step in, uh, uh, in such uh, time when women were forbidden even to be educated through their vernacular education say uh, Marathi. Certainly during her time there was a debate about women education, but her father was trying to teach uh, uh, his wife uh, Sanskrit and that created a lot of um, uh, controversy in their uh, native uh, uh, in their native land and certainly the, uh, this uh, progressive attitude of ramabai's parent enabled her to learn sanskrit and not only learn but also master its literature and all uh, just uh, 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 prohibit was not to read uh, vedas so uh, uh, ramabai in many ways inherited a lot of progressive uh, ideas from her uh, parents, certainly uh, her father and also uh, uh, from her association, from her journey and her encounters with many uh, uh, reformist, many uh, religion, many culture or the intellectual tradition. So, uh, she was born into a orthodox Chitpavan Marathi Brahmin family of Mangalore. So, these Marathi families migrated few generations ago from Maratha to Karnataka and she was born in the surrounding Ganga Mool which is the origin of the sacred river Tunga in South Karnataka on April 23rd, 1858. Ramabai was allowed to access which was forbidden or prohibited for the women and also learned Sanskrit literature and this is something very radical in those uh, days. But her progressive parents going against the prevailing social norms of restricting girl child from education made Ramabai well acquainted with the vast literature of Sanskrit except Vedas. The Vedas she began to learn when she came into contact with 
reformist organization such as uh, uh, Brahma Samaj and its leader uh, Keshav Chandra Sen. But from the uh, childhood itself, she was allowed to access or um, uh, learn Sanskrit literature by her progressive or uh, reform oriented parents. In her childhood, which was filled with pilgrimages or family pilgrimages with her parents to different places, Ramabai learned many languages uh, or also she worked as a Puranic. So, locally in some temples preaching ancient texts to the um, uh, common masses and that uh, allowed her, enabled her to learn many languages including Marathi, Hindustani, Kannar and in her adulthood when she settled in Bengal or Calcutta, she learned uh, Bengali as well. So, the learning of these languages certainly helped her to see multiple sites or uh, um, the experiences of women or operations of women in different parts of the country and to develop her uh, outlook about the uh, condition of women in different parts of the uh, world and uh, different parts of the country, uh, certainly in India and to uh, uh, respond to such uh, uh, challenges by um, uh, expressing or by asserting or by uh, fighting for their self-reliance and not just uh, uh, by uh, uh, literating them uh, or giving them access to education. So, the question of uh, taking decision which uh, uh, affects uh, their life should be also given to uh, the women which were uh, not being thought out in the uh, reforms movement that was uh, happening. So, her wide ranging travels, pilgrimages and also the learning of different languages enabled her to develop her outlook about the question of women, question of religion and the unnecessity or uh, ineffectiveness of ritualistic or performative side of any religion. Um, so, far that this she developed uh, in her later career. She was left alone with her younger brother Srinivasan when her parents died in famine of 1874 and wandering from place to place they practice all religious rituals in the hope of ending their sufferings, but nothing helped much and they faced in their personal life in their childhood a lot of trials, a lot of sufferings and through ritual performance and all uh, they were trying to overcome such, but nothing uh, uh, helped much and uh, this led to their loss of faith in the performative side of religion. So, after travelling to different parts of country or Himalayas, they finally settled in Kolkata and there she got acquainted with Brahma Samaj and many reformers and for the first time she began to read Vedas on the advice of Kesav Chandra Sen, the leader of Brahma Samaj. It was also in Kolkata that Ramabai came in close proximity with the Christianity or the church or their Bible. So, she was gifted the Bible in one Christian gathering to which she was not initially interested, but never got parted with since then. So, initially when a Bible was gifted to her in a uh, gathering, she was not very interested, not very uh, convinced and the Brahminical Sanskrit uh, teaching had or uh, uh, the uh, norms and the values had strong influence on her uh, character and in her initial uh, writings, she was even arguing for the revival of Sanskrit or Sanskrit learning as a way of uh, re-establishing the glories of India. In one of her essays, she was arguing about the role of Sanskrit and Sanskrit learning in the uh, re-establishing the glories of uh, uh, of India and decadentness of the uh, Indian um, uh, society or community was result of their uh, distancing from the Sanskrit and its learning. So, she was not very uh, interested when uh, the Bible was gifted, but she was also not parted completely with the influence of such context. Uh, Ramabai married Bipin Bihari Medhavi in Kolkata and who was from Kaist caste which Ramabai referred as Sudra, this breaking the caste barrier and this in many ways we can say in Kolkata or life in Kolkata was a remarkable or mark as a beginning of many transition in her life from orthodoxy, Sanskrit kind of learning to modern um, uh, scientific or rational outlook to society, 
to questioning some of the practices of uh, of uh, Hindu orthodoxy, especially in the context of women, um, and uh, her gradual uh, uh, distance or seeking a spiritual con uh, comfort from Christianity, and then uh, gradually also criticizing the many practices in uh, uh, of the church. So this intellectual um, uh, journey or her transition from a particular kind of thinking and um, um, uh, life to uh, uh, encounter different uh, uh, kinds of um, uh, culture or different uh, religion or yet maintaining her own conscientious decision or uh, uh, thinking is something which she began uh, to uh, deeply reflect upon from her engagement with various reforms uh, uh, movement or uh, reformist organization or uh, reformists in Kolkata. So, Kolkata can be seen in many ways a kind of beginning of uh, her transition to many other kind of culture or religion or possibilities or uh, approaches to think about herself or the life of women or the question of caste and uh, the role of religion in such uh, um, issues. So, it was in Kolkata uh, of Bengal that she also began to give extensive public talks and lectures. So, she visited different parts of Kolkata or Bengal to uh, deliver public talks and lecture and uh, develop her own intellectual capacity to uh, reflect, to engage uh, with many uh, social and political issues uh, of her uh, of her time and her mastery of her sanskrit earned her award of pandita or the women scholar and saraswati goddess of learning from university of calcutta so there was a public scrutiny or uh, interview conducted in the senate hall of uh, the university by many uh, by a panel of uh, eminent sanskrit scholars which she uh, faced and uh, her mastery of Sanskrit uh, in uh, earned her this uh, award of Pandita and uh, Saraswati from the University of Calcutta. So, Ramabai um, um, in many ways um, uh, it was uh, a great uh, Sanskrit uh, scholar and her mastery of her Sanskrit enabled her to think about lot of uh, social and political issue in her own unique way and through that she carved out her own space, her own judgment from the prevail, prevailing dogmas and practices or performative, uh, performativities in different uh, religions including Hinduism and Christianity. So, it allows her to uh, connect to her own concerns and develop her judgment on the basis of her own concerns and not guided by any external uh, text or uh, influences. So, uh, Calcutta in many ways played a very crucial role in her personal, political and as well as in intellectual life. Her husband died two years after their marriage and Ramabai was left alone with her only child Manorama to take care of and after that began the dreadful trial in her life as an upper caste Hindu widowed woman which she overcame with a strong will and inherent quest for journey and ability to learn from the other tradition. After the death of her husband she went to Maharashtra and there she greatly admired the works of Prarthana Samaj. So, she was the follower of or believer in Brahma Samaj and its teachings and when she uh, came back to Maharashtra and her um, um, popularity reached um, different parts of the country because of uh, her works, her uh, uh, public uh, uh, talks or lectures and certainly after the award of University of Calcutta uh, 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 Pandita and Saraswati, uh, Saraswati to um, uh, uh, Ramabai. So, uh, when she uh, reached um, uh, Maharashtra, she involved in many reforms work there and greatly admired by the work of Prasna Samaj. But the inherent quest for learning and visiting different places and transcending the boundaries set by the orthodoxy allowed her to go to England in 1833 
and there she taught Sanskrit and in turn studied natural science, mathematics, English, literature and Greek in Cheltenham Female College in England. Ramabai was in a constant search of um, uh, learning uh, new or scientific or um, uh, uh, from other tradition or culture or religion to develop her own ways of uh, uh, um, uh, articulating the social or the uh, political uh, challenges uh, in India. Now, during her stay in England, she converted to Christianity and that created a lot of furor in um, uh, Maharashtra or back home and the impact of such um, a conversion we will discuss in the following section. So, from England, she went to US in 1886 after staying nearly three years in England and uh, through her public lectures and participation in reforms movement because now she has imbibed or she has converted to Christianity which made her participation in different reforms movement in uh, uh, US more accessible. So, uh, through these public lectures and participation in different uh, reforms movement in US, she garnered the support for her social especially women's reforms back in India. This was also a time if you remember Vivekananda was in US for the world religion conference. So, um, uh, she was also trying to garner the support for the women's reforms work that she was intended to carry when she will be back in India. So, she also published a text the high caste Hindu women and this text instantly become a great hit or uh, widely admired and acknowledged and surprised. Uh, many scholars around the world and also uh, people back in uh, scholars back in uh, back in India that uh, this was something a unique attempt to understand or to express the condition of women the exploitative status or the oppressive uh, structure of domination of her uh, women within the caste society written by a Hindu uh, women and this she published in 1887 in which she described the deplorable condition of uh, upper caste Hindu women. This we will discuss in the following lecture of what she described and how she explained the conditions of upper caste Hindu women and how caste and uh, gender come together to uh, subjugate or to exploit uh, the women. Uh, so, publication of this book instantly iconized her life and works and she received wide admiration and financial supports for her works from USA, Japan or especially Australia. She returned to India in 1888 and immersed herself into women empowerment and emancipation. So, uh, when she came back to India after her uh, religious conversion, uh, conversion to Christianity and also publication of this uh, book, The High Caste Hindu Women. Uh, uh, she uh, now uh, clearly or very um, um, uh, consistently started to work uh, for the uh, empowerment or emancipation of the uh, subjugated women or the oppressed uh, women in India. Now, we can look at some of the emancipation works uh, Mabai had done. The first thing her entry into this women reforms or women empowerment uh, movement was a kind of radical uh, step as it was uh, male dominated. So, Ramabai entry into the struggles for women emancipation and reforms movement which were till then the exclusive domain of the male reformers were looked down upon with a degree of contempt even suspicion. So, uh, her work or her entry into this women eman emancipation work was not really appreciated. Even many people deplored it because of her conversion to Christianity and this uh, they saw it as a kind of attempt to convert the Hindu women to Christianity and so on. So, uh, her entry was not uh, welcomed or appreciated uh, in um, uh, uh, in India or particularly in western India. So, therefore, it also lead to her uh, marginalization or her suppression when it comes to write the social history or the political history of western India for a very long time almost a century. It is only in the recent times that her work or there is a retrieval of her work and activities and her contribution in the 
social reforms movement, especially uh, in reforming the condition of women. So, Ramabai, while championing the cause of women, transcended the limits of gender reforms set by the male reformers. So, she envisioned far beyond the mere goal of uplifting women through reforms in social tradition or education. So, the male reformers uh, were trying to reform tradition or um, uh, trying to make um, education accessible to the women to reform their life. Uh, uh, Ramabai transcended such objectives to include the self-reliance of women as the major objective of reform movement. The question of taking decision uh, that affects their life about marriage, uh, about divorce, about property and so on and so forth. So, uh, this is something which is the contribution of Ramabai and Ramabai also opened two shelter homes, Sarada Sadan and Mukti Sadan for the uh, destitute women. In these homes, she offered emotional and physical support to uh, such oppressed and marginalized women and through vocational training, she also taught them the self-reliance. So, the role of education or vocational training in self-reliance uh, is something uh, Ramabai began to, uh, 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 to inculcate or to impart uh, in the destitute women and their lives. So, she tried to create an awareness among the women about the need for self-improvements through education or through vocational training. And to reach out to the women from various backgrounds and orientation, she gave lectures on different topics including religious scriptures, morality and gender conduct. Ramabai also founded one Arya Mahila Samaj in 1882 and this uh, Samaj and the objective of this Samaj she mentioned as protesting against child marriage, that is the one objective. The second was preventing men remarrying while the first wife is alive. So, that is the second objective to prevent the men from marrying when the first, uh, so polygamy or the um, uh, unmatched marriage uh, was something which was widely prevalent and she was uh, focusing on this preventing men to marry when the first wife is alive and third helping the destitute women as the major objective of So, uh, the Ari Mahila Samaj was a kind of women organization to uh, achieve these three objectives which she uh, identify for the Samaj. And through Ari Mahila Samaj, Ramabai also developed a kind of tactical or unique way of organizing or mobilizing the women. So, the reason for such tactical or unique ways of uh, reaching out to the women was her awareness, her personal understanding of the prohibition or the um, um, uh, restraint, uh, restrictions that was there on the women in their participation in the public life. So, uh, the socially the uh, role of women was confined to the household and in the public political life her entry was uh, uh, prohibited or seen with suspicion with lots of character and other kind of uh, assassination. So, you may also think that even in contemporary times such um, uh, a stigma or such uh, uh, um, uh, prohibition is being practiced in many part uh, many parts of the country and uh, their participation, their assertion in the public life is not seen with uh, a kind of respect or uh, with dignity, but uh, uh, it is seen as a kind of um, um, uh, trans uh, transcending the limits or the boundary of their role. So, she was aware of such prohibition or restrictions on women's entry into public space. To overcome this, be able to access women, Ramambai made it compulsory for men to bring along with them at least one female member from their family if they wanted to listen to her lecture. So, this was a kind of tactical way to reach out to the women or to invite women in the works and the um, philosophy that she was arguing for. Now, if you look at her views on religion, in her first texts that she wrote in 1882, the Istri Dharma Niti, her thinking or theorization of women and the role of religion in the life of women or uh, the men is something articulated in her first text and here she is deeply influenced by the 
religious Sanskrit uh, text and treatises and she theorize or articulate the uh, conduct of women or men in a particular uh, 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 particular uh, way and there she explain her views on uh, uh, religion and role of religion as well. So, um, in this text she offered uh, her understanding of a true religion and this understanding of true religions remain there even when she converted to Christianity. Now, if you look at her views on um, religion, uh, the first text that she wrote on uh, Istri Dharmniti, which we can translate is that morals for women in 1882, she argued for the role of religion in the life of men, women and their salvation and also in the progress of the humanity and the welfare of the humanity, the role of religion is very influential. In this text also her the influence on her thought is from her exposure to the uh, Sanskrit literature or her understanding of Sanskrit which allowed her to develop a conscience or connection to the conscience and cons the role of conscience as the basis for the judgment in individual life about the social and political challenges is something which stick to uh, uh, Ramabai and her conception of religion is very different in a way than the narrow, uh, narrowly or in a kind of ritualistic, dogmatic or uh, in an organized understanding of religion in Hinduism and Christianity. And there in this text she also then define the meaning of uh, what she calls the true religion and the role of true religion in individuals life and uh, salvation. So, uh, this understanding of uh, true religion remains there even when she converted to Christianity and that allow her to critique many of the practices by the church, um, uh, church as well. So, uh, Ramabai offered a detailed account of her understanding of a true religion in this text it is Sri Dharmaniti, the uh, morals uh, for women. So, for Ramabai, religion did not mean any particular religious doctrine such as Hinduism or Christianity. For her, the true religion is conduct in accordance with conscience. So, the role of conscience or the conduct that is guided by conscience is something uh, which she defines as the uh, religion. So, in this sense, all the doctrines have similar or same message and that message is about uh, uh, the supremacy or the religious conduct or uh, how the uh, individual can attain a spiritual heights by following one's conscience and this kind of understanding of religion we have seen in many thinkers as well certainly in Gandhi, uh, Tagore also in uh, Arvindu Ghosh or Vivekananda. So, the message the essential message in all the religion is uh, more or less uh, same, it is uh, similar. So, uh, Ramabai for her the understanding of true religion is something which is very similar to this kind of conception of uh, religious message which we have seen through uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy, um, uh, Arvindu Ghosh, Vivekananda and also Gandhi. So, uh, she referred to 10 characteristics of a true religion and these 10 characteristics are courage, forgiveness, control over mind, abstaining from stealing, purity, control over the senses, intelligence, knowledge, truth and the absence of anger. So, the, uh, the moral or the ethical conduct of life is should be based on certain principles and that principles uh, she uh, characterize as 10 uh, such um, uh, characteristics or principles which is the basis of a true religion for her and not the narrowly limited conception of a doctrinaire religion as it is there in Hinduism or, um, or in Christianity. So, practicing this true religion according to Ramabai is, can, is uh, the primary duty of men and women and it is for two reasons. Firstly, religion is the basis of all things as nothing can stand without the foundation a man and woman without religion cannot manage his or her life in a desired way. So, in her thought, in her articulation, the role of religion and religion 
the conception she had is a true religion and not the doctrinaire religion of uh, Hinduism or Christianity. So, uh, that provides the foundation for uh, individual uh, life to have a meaningful or a kind of uh, desired objective or um, uh, a kind of achievement in the life. So, therefore, the role of religion is a very necessary or essential in the individual life. Second, it is the good conduct or true religion which accompanies man, women till his or her death and also beyond her death and therefore, religion for her is a source of salvation and moreover, only a true religion in her opinion can protect this world and ensure its uh, welfare. So, the role of religion is not just for the individual life and for the attainment of um, salvation in the individual life and also give individual life a particular direction or desired uh, way of leading a good life or uh, good conduct in individual life, but also for the welfare of uh, uh, the humanity or the uh, world is also lies in the uh, religion that she has argued for. And the, again one needs to point out the religion for her is not a doctrinal religion, but a religion which is based on certain characteristics which she has identified. So, in the light of her views on religion, one can infer the reason for her conversion. So, uh, she was in search of spiritual comfort and uh, one can argue that she might have thought that Christian doctrines might provide her such comfort from the emotional or the spiritual urge she was having in her encounter with an alien or a foreign religion and she might have thought about its contribution or uh, the role of uh, Christianity in comforting her spiritual urge and therefore, she might have converted to Christianity to attain such or to achieve such comfort. Her conversion to Christianity can only mean her changing of path to religion and not the religion itself which remains for her based on the individual conscience and she on the basis of such conscience as the basis of uh, moral conduct or ethical conduct in one's life or in one's public uh, life, she continued to follow even after her uh, conversion to, uh, to Christianity where she used the religion as the true religion and the path of Christianity or Hinduism is only the means to, uh, to, to attain such uh, uh, inner connection with the conscience. So, uh, her encounters with church and colonialism if you look at so, with her conversion, Ramabai also got a sense of the authoritarian churches and their underlying colonial assumptions and biases. So, from her analytical mind, which viewed everything with a degree of skepticism, the dogmas associated with the practices of church could not escape her attention and she was aware of the many such dogmatic or ritualistic practices uh, by the church. But this created a problem because any criticism of church might lead to the questioning of honesty and authenticity of her conversion. So, she understood uh, the uh, dogmatic or the authoritarian side and as well as the uh, biases that the missionaries or the churches were um, holding. Uh, but uh, it was a kind of problem for um, uh, uh, kind of problematic for her because uh, uh, if she began to criticize which she did, uh, then uh, uh, the danger was that her authenticity or honesty in conversion may be questioned. So, on the one hand she had criticism by uh, many of her uh, contemporaries in India because of her conversion to Christianity, but even after her conversion to Christianity she began to uh, look at many of the practices with a degree of skepticism and was very critical of such uh, practices and their uh, biasness. So, however, the, the churches tried to restrict her liberty of conscience or using her conscience which allowed one to have independent and autonomous thinking about certain or issues of society of one's life and uh, have one's own judgment on the basis of conscience and the uh, uh, church tried to uh, restrict 
such um, uh, liberty of uh, conscience, Ramabai always adhered to the call of the conscience or her conscience as the basis of her judgment and use her inherent skepticism to have her own judgment about social as well as religious practices. And she writes, I have a conscience and mind and a judgment of my own. I must myself think and do everything which God has given me the power of doing. I have just with great effort freed myself from the yoke of the Indian priestly tribe. So, I am not at present willing to place myself under another similar yoke of accepting everything which comes from the priests as authorized command of the most head. So, this is her views on religion. So, it is similar to a kind of uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy uh, response to the congratulatory message uh, from a Christian missionary about his religious conversion which he never uh, 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 did. But uh, uh, her uh, his response is very similar to what uh, 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 Ramabai or vice versa. So Ramabai's response to the organized or the ritualistic or performative side of religion, of whether it is Christianity or Hinduism, is very similar to this reformist or rational uh, approach to religion, where the role of God or the religion is acknowledged, but many practices or the rituals are uh, criticized and Ramabai also develops such approach to the organized religion or the practices, which she considers as a kind of obstruction in the life of individual to connect to its own concerns and develops one judgment and moral conduct according to their own concerns. So, the role of God and religion is necessary acknowledged but the approach to the God and religion is more scientific, more personal, intimate than through the priestly class of one kind over the other. So, apart from the authoritarianism, Ramabai also experienced the colonial biases in activities of many churches. So, when Ramabai was asked to teach the native languages, religion and philosophy of India to the English population, the bishops in India responded very negatively and they considered themselves as having better understanding of Indian culture and philosophy and stated how Ramabai being the female teacher could offend her Indian counterparts. To this Ramabai responded that she knew the culture and philosophy of India better than any foreigners and bishops no matter how long they have stayed in India. So, she was also very critical of this negative approach about uh, 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 the authority of knowledge on the part of many Christian missionaries, especially those who are uh, living in India. So, their objection, their biasness also uh, allowed Ramabai to develop a kind of critical outlook or critical approach to the many practices of church and Christianity as well. So, now if you look at uh, Ramabai and uh, many of her contemporaries, and as we are saying that uh, the role and contribution of Ramabai uh, lead to uh, a kind of polarization where many uh, admired uh, uh, her work and um, uh, accepted her uh, contributions or respected her um, um, uh, works and um, um, intellectual engagement with the question of caste and gender. On the other hand, a uh, number of people also uh, uh, look at her works with contempt or demonized her uh, legacies and con uh, contribution. So, that happens with uh, 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 many of her contemporaries uh, contemporary as well and that also lead to a kind of uh, admiration of her works outside and condemnation of her work uh, uh, in the country and for a very long time for uh, this reason, uh, her work and her contributions are not sufficiently explored or, in, uh, or examined uh, in India. So, Ramabai's conversion especially was the major reason for such uh, suppression or such condemnation of her work and contribution. So, Ramabai's conversion and following missionary activities created instant shock and even incomprehension among many of her contemporaries and many wrote in different magazines such as Hindu Prakash, 
defaming accounts of her character, especially her religious convergence. So, think about the India of that time and the context when the uh, education uh, was being promoted, but for very long time prohibited for the women and especially her entry into the public political life was seen with some kind of suspicion or some kind of skepticism when in orthodox upper caste women like Ramabai uh, uh, lead a public life married uh, someone from the other caste and also on top of that converted to a uh, religion which was seen as a kind of uh, challenge to Hinduism. Uh, she was obviously uh, uh, con uh, condemned by many uh, many of her contemporaries and also um, uh, in number of social uh, reformers however gradually because and the uh, the point in this kind of demonization or admiration is not to engage more critically or more closely with the evolution of one of a remarkable uh, uh, modern Indian um, uh, thinker um, or women thinker who uh, started with a orthodoxy or orthodox learning and gradually develop and encounter uh, 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 many uh, other traditions or intellectual uh, approach to reflect on society, to reflect on religion, to think about the nation to think about the role of women in the nation and how to empower or emancipate the women. So, somewhere uh, in this admiration or condemnation, the actual evolution of thought and thinking in one of the remarkable life of uh, uh, modern India in Pandit Ramabai is somewhat uh, less explored or, uh, or marginalized or suppressed to a great uh, extent. So, it is not um, um, uh, enough or sufficient just to uh, recognize her because of her conversion and condemn her because of that. It is equally not uh, sufficient to, uh, to uh, retrieve her merely as a feminist uh, thinker which she was and she asserted the um, agency or the um, right of women in making uh, decisions which affect uh, uh, their life, but she was also envisioning um, about the role of religion, the role of um, um, women in the uh, um, construction or in the imagination of a nation and a, um, a lot of other things. So, that we need to have uh, a kind of critical engagement with the evolution of uh, thought process in Ramabai, which will help us to understand some of the overlapping encounters and challenges that many of uh, modern Indian thinkers and reformers were facing. So, um, this uh, 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 was the uh, way uh, she received uh, the responses from many of uh, his contemporaries, which was divided among the admirers and also those who were the critic, those who condemned her work, her life and also um, her character. So, uh, however, gradually because of her work and consistent work to improve the life of women, it was gradually generated a great deal of admiration even among those who were the critic of Ramabai. One of the prominent social reformer M. G. Ranade in Western India, Maharashtra was very appreciative of her works and Ramabai also found a comfort in the reform oriented Prathna Samaj. Although most of her contemporaries like Bal Gangadhar Tilak could not support her conversion at any cost. So, uh, they were very opposed to her religious conversion. They did applaud her courage and her works for social reform. So, even among the critics she was able to uh, um, uh, turn them into an admirer because of her consistent uh, reform regarding the uh, women or in the emancipation of women. The only prominent um, uh, figure who supported um, Ramabai in her uh, conversion was from uh, Jyoti Rao Phule. Uh, Jyoti Rao himself articulating about the caste domination, caste exploitation by the upper caste Hindus or in the Hindu society 
stood by uh, Ramabai and uh, supported her conversion to Christianity and consider it as a radical act of defying upper caste Hindu patriarchal system. So, uh, 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 in conclusion one can see a kind of uh, remarkable or influential life that Ramabai led and her personal life was uh, embodiment of such encounters from uh, orthodox Hinduism to uh, uh, Christianity from rationalistic scientific outlook to dogmatic ritualistic practices from uh, uh, patriarchy to uh, caste exploitations and also the uh, re-emergence or the um, uh, biasness that was inherent in the conception of nation or internationalism. So, something which we need to deeply engage with to understand the various aspects of Ramabai and her thoughts which remain for a very long time suppressed or less explored in the mainstream discourse about the social and political reforms in India. So, on this text and uh, in the next lecture we are going to focus more specifically about her views on caste and gender. So, on this lecture you can look at some of these works like Pandita Ramabai life and landmark writings by Meera Kosambi, one of the best known works so far on the life and works of Ramabai. You can also look at crossing thresholds, feminist essays in social history by Meera Kosambi and also Indian response to Christianity, church and colonialism, case of Pandit Ramabai again by Meera Kosambi and some other writings in EPW and also Journal of Feminist Studies in Religion about Christianity reforms and the reconstitution of gender, the case of Pandit Rama by Parinita Seti. So, these, uh, these are some of the works which you can refer to, to understand uh, uh, the life and times and the works of one of the remarkable modern Indian life uh, 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 of Rama Bai. So, uh, that is all in today's lecture. Thanks for listening, thanks for your patience, thank you.